We're now going to showcase a new product for the very first time. We're super excited because we've been working on it for a few years now, introducing RTS Enterprise on Kubernetes. It's an architecture that's based on microservices, it's containerized, and it runs in an orchestration fabric. It's a new cloud-native deployment for your enterprise GIS. It's designed for scale, resiliency, and maintainability. And of course, as you can expect, it can be fully automated too. There are three key concepts I want to introduce to you at this time about this offering. The first one is how we deliver the software itself. It's packaged as Docker containers made available via a Docker registry. These containers are very self-reliant. They are autonomous units that help with fast and consistent deployments and easy maintenance too. The next is how we run the software. It runs on an orchestration fabric, it's called Kubernetes, which is designed for cloud architectures. It's like a distributed operating system. You can manage this fabric like as if it was one cluster, one unit, making it very easy to deploy, manage, monitor, and scale. But you might ask, where did we spend and invest most of our efforts? It's to break down all the capabilities of enterprise GIS into small managed microservices, units of functionality that can be distributed and scaled massively. We architected a complete GIS system that's cloud native by design. It's made for your enterprise cloud, whether it's on premises, it's in your private cloud or in your public cloud. Our first release will support Microsoft Azure and its managed Kubernetes environment, it's called EKS. We also support Amazon AWS and its managed environment is called EKS and on Red Hat's OpenShift. In a subsequent release, we plan to support Google GCP, its managed Kubernetes environment is called GKE. Beyond the cloud native computing aspect itself, here are some more of what you'll see in this architecture details of how cloud native data storage connectivity is achieved. It's very fitting for the environment that you run in. And all this can be provisioned using infrastructure as a code pattern. This architecture is designed to meet modern DevOps expectations from architecture to operations. Now let's get into some detail here in terms of how you deploy, configure, and use. Before you deploy, you need a provisioned Kubernetes cluster which could be OpenShift, Azure AKS, or Amazon EKS. Here you see a cluster of about 15 nodes with some attached volumes for persistent storage. When you run the deployment script, we lay down the containerized microservices into each of these pods. The first ones are for administration use, as you'd expect, like the admin API manager, and of course the help system itself, and the ingress controller that routes the incoming calls that you see on top. Then we start configuring the system to suit your architecture pattern and necessary capabilities. In this step here, you can see managed data stores like relational, spatial temporal, object stores being automatically configured for high availability as indicated by the number of pods running them like 2X and 3X and so on. Also, we have very powerful metric collection via Prometheus and Grafana. And then more microservices like a catalog to list your services and the JavaScript API itself start appearing. And then as you notice here, the portal itself has been broken down into multiple microservices. These are the right granularity for the functions they provide, the need to scale and patch when necessary. Then you have the geo services like maps, tiles, scenes, geocoding, and so on start appearing. Of course, you can continue to configure or use the system at this point. You can attach your own external enterprise and cloud data stores like you'd expect too. For a first demo, I'd like to introduce Marcus to show us how the entire deploy and configure process is automated using a very modern DevOps pattern. It's really defining geospatial infrastructure as code. Marcus. Thank you, Jay. To get started, you will need to provision your Kubernetes cluster. Once it is provisioned, remember this three-step model to get started setting up Arches Enterprise on Kubernetes. Deploy, configure, and use. Let me go ahead and show you. Here in our terminal, we use the deploy script 
to go ahead and bootstrap our setup. This script can be used with this deployment template, which is specific to your enterprise, allowing you to easily automate across your dev, staging, and production environments. Let's go ahead and run this script. Now this script directly communicates to your Kubernetes cluster. Additionally, it runs an initial set of microservices. This looks like a few minutes to finish. To help visualize what is going on within our cluster, we're going to go ahead and use the tool Lens, which is a popular open source Kubernetes IDE. Let's switch over to Lens. Do you remember that initial set of microservices that I told you about earlier? Well, within Lens, underneath this pods tab, we have our four initial set of microservices. We can now proceed to step two, the configure step. Let's navigate back to the terminal and over to our configure script. Just like in the deployment step with the deployment script, this configure script also can use a configure template. Let's take a sneak peek into our template file. We can see that we have specified a system architecture profile of enhanced high availability. Now that means that ArcGIS Enterprise on Kubernetes will be configured with both redundancy and high availability. Let's go ahead and now run this script. In the configure step, microservices are launched from storage to system and utility geoservices. Let's navigate back to, the, to Lens. And we can now see an additional microservice has been populated. This process will continue for a few more minutes. I have set up a second deployment that already has finished with the configure step. Within Lens, let's now get over to that environment. Underneath the pods tab, notice that all of our microservices have been successfully provisioned in this environment. Once that's done, let's navigate back to our terminal with this new environment. And we see indeed that the configure step has successfully finished. Using the three-step model, we have just deployed and configured a production-ready, enhanced, highly available ArcGIS enterprise ready to be used. This simple yet powerful workflow will enable your success automating ArcGIS enterprise on Kubernetes.